Hi everyone, it's Jackie at Spare Room Studio and I'm back today to do my completed pages for June 2024 video. I didn't have such a productive month colouring wise as I did last month. However, I'm happy with what I did achieve. If you're not familiar with the channel, I did adopt a dog from a rescue at the end of May and he was a very fearful dog. And he has a lot of issues that we need to work with in terms of building confidence. So I have spent a lot of time with him, working with him and, um, you know, just basically getting him settled into our home. So I had less colouring time and what I did have, I found that I was quite tired and I wasn't always in the mood to do a lot of colouring. So... Not so many in terms of numbers, but I'm happy with what I did. And I also did create quite a few videos, despite having a lot of technical issues that um, were troubling me in terms of my equipment and so on. I'm trying to sort that out. But I got a few things coloured on camera as well as demos, so we didn't do too badly. So I shall get started. I think it's about um, 10, 10 books and about 18 pages that I've completed. I have a couple of buddy colours still underway and a few whips started, but uh, for completed pages, it's about 18, I believe. So early on in the month, I started with this one, um, which is Symphony of Cute Animals by Kanoko Igusa. And I used Derwent Inktense and Crazy Art coloured pencils. And that one turned out really well. I love the deep, vibrant, saturated colour that I achieved there. Um, Derwent Inktense are always a great pencil to use as a base. But uh, with the added coloured pencil over the top, it really comes alive. So I am really happy with the way that that one turned out. This is one that I did colour on camera. I used Derwent Ink Tents to do like a watercolour wash background. And then I used Brute Funa Macarons and the Brute Funa Skin Tone pencil sets to add some extra colour in. And uh, I really, really like that one. Quite happy with the way that turned out. It was a demonstration of how to get uh, watercolour-like effects with your Derwent Ink Tense Pencil and then use coloured pencil on top for some definition or extra colour. This one uh, is, let me put my little notes here. This one is Derwent Ink Tense Pencil with various brands of coloured pencils, water based markers, and metallic jelly roll pen. And you can see the shine from that jelly roll pen. Once again, the Derwent Ink Tense base provides the majority of the colour there. And I just use a bit of coloured pencil to deepen shadows or add some extra, um, you know, sharper details in there. I really love how vibrant those Derwent Ink Tense pencils are on their own. So that one turned out quite well as well. Okay, so that was uh, Symphony of Cute Animals. I've got a couple of buddy colours going on with Poet Spice at the moment. And uh, we've both finished this page here. So uh, for her, hashtag Hot Guys Summer for Poet, I think it is. Uh, Water-based markers, Sakura glaze pens and metallic gel pen with Artex pencil and I think there might also be a little bit of um, white acrylic paint pen as well. So these orange fish here are shiny. I've also got some shiny stuff going on with the fish down the bottom here. And a little bit of metallic on the trident. So believe it or not, I started that page thinking I'd keep it subtle, but um, subtle doesn't seem to be in my nature when it comes to colouring books. I like to throw all the bright colours and get nice and saturated colour with it. So that's how that ended up. 
So we've got a couple more that we're working on in this book, which you should hopefully see next month. So that was Mythomorphia by Kirby Rosane. So thanks to Poet for taking me back to that book. It's a while since I've worked in that book. The Creatures of Ken Matsuda. This is the French version by Hatchet Heroes. This is a new to me book this month and I couldn't wait to get started in it. I really love the artwork. Um, this one I used Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils with Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils over top. And I did film some of this uh, to show you how I use the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils to get those very soft washy effects. Some bleeding there. And it was basically to test the paper out because that was the first time I'd worked in this book so I wasn't sure how it would go. It has wrinkled it a little bit. It's, you know, sort of wavy. Um, but beautiful artwork and really well suited to watercolour effect. So then I coloured this one off camera myself with uh, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils again with the Polychromos. And this one I used some splattering sort of techniques there in the background. And really quite enjoy working in this book. It really is um, very easy to work in. And then very much on the watery theme still this month, I did a demonstration on camera also of uh, Secura Koi colouring brush pens which are a, a water-based marker and I used the coloured version on that side as my inspiration for the colour palette and also you know to look at some of the details um, the effects that Ken had created in his painting and then I did my side like that so it's not exactly the same but it's very closely inspired by it. And I really quite enjoyed some of these watercolour wash effects that I got with the Koi colouring brush pen. <coughs> the technique that I used was a, a, to get an old ceramic plate and put some marker onto the plate, um, blend it with water, a water brush, and then paint with it. And that turned out really well. I'm really happy with that one. So that's the creatures of Ken Matsuda. So same theme in this book. I did a colouring, uh, sorry, a buddy colour with Diane Dreams in colour. And we did um, swallows. And I chose the colour for the birds first. I had about six colours that I chose and I decided to only limit myself to that palette, which is very unusual for me. Uh, but it worked very well for this one and I'm really happy with how she turned out. And so again, I did most of that as watercolour washes. You can see in her face there. And... A little bit at the end I came back with the marker and actually directly onto the paper with the marker for some details but very much uh, worked as a watercolour wash in fact that seems to have dominated a lot of my pages this month and then this one is one of my favorite ones for the month this is actually Crayola super tips and same thing, I had the old ceramic plate, um, scribbled the marker onto the plate, used a water brush to dilute it and lift the colour. I mixed a few colours together and that's the result that I got there. And I did a, a fair bit of that on camera. If you want to have a look, um, there's a couple of videos. And at the very end, I just used a, a small amount of coloured pencil in those um, deeper shadowy areas just to get a few of the details sorted and a little bit more crisp. But you can see that those Crayola Super Tips have done an amazing job with watercolour wash, like wetting, wet, bleeding sort of techniques. 
very effective and uh, I've also used a little bit of um, I think it was either secure a jelly roll or maybe just a white acrylic paint pen just to put a few dots of white back in and reinstate some areas that weren't so crisp so she's one of my favorites this month I'm really happy with the way that one turned out Next I have Fantasy Tiny Homes, and I, actually I don't know if I mentioned that one, it's Wildflower Folk by Christine Karen. So Fantasy Tiny Homes, a um, little sneak peek there of one that I will show in August. I had a little project to work on that will be, I'll be able to share it come August time. Um, this was the first one that I coloured in this book. This is the newly released, uh, updated version of Fantasy Tiny Homes. And I coloured this one on camera with Derwent Inktense pencil, some coloured pencil and um, metallic gel pen for some uh, little highlights there. You can see perhaps in the border. Now this one I used a uh, a lot of water and that's why we've got so much wrinkling up there I did try to iron it but that was the best it would come up but I did use an awful lot of water and that is Amazon printed paper and then also in this book I have done I've got a couple started but haven't got very far along I coloured this one on camera as well. This was the Sakura Koi colouring brush pen. And then I used um, coloured pencil to just come over and do some details and some metallic jelly roll pen there as well. That was a slightly different colour scheme to what I would normally work with, but I'm really happy with that, that one as well. And I really like some of the effects that I got with those Secure a koi colouring brush pens even on the Amazon printed paper. It, it's worked quite well Beautiful colours and a nice effect So that's fantasy tiny homes Now I couldn't quite remember because my record keeping this month has been pretty bad But I think that this was this month. I apologize if I'm showing you one that I've already shown this was with Poet Spice as well, Buddy Colour. And I used Ohuhu alcohol pens, alcohol markers, with coloured pencil. And I've also used some Secura glaze pen on the crystals and the snowflakes in places. I don't know if I'm going to pick that up. It's always very hard to pick that shine up on a video or a photograph. And that is one that I'm really quite pleased with as well. Nice colour scheme and it was a it was a enjoyable colour. So that's Mythographic Wild Winter by Joseph Kettenbang. This is an, another fairly new to me book, Lunar Colouring by Stratton Peterson. I've had it a little while but hadn't gotten around to colouring in it yet. Um, I think because the, the pictures are so pretty sometimes I get not not intimidated but they're so pretty that I don't quite know how to color them to their best advantage and so I hang back and and have to think about it for a while but I use this one to actually demonstrate on camera how you don't have to have a certain type of water-based marker to get the effects that I'm demonstrating and I use lots of different ones on the background here. And I chose this because it was like a nice big, um, big space that I could try all those different markers on. And then I wasn't quite sure how to finish it off so I've gone very simple for this one but it's really pretty and I really like how those water-based markers have worked. It really has been a big month for the water-based markers, but I, you know, I've, I've sort of rediscovered just how much I love working with watercolor effects. 
and so it really did dominate the whole month. Okay, so that was lunar colouring. On the same vein, because what I decided to do was to show you um, quite a few books uh, with the same sort of techniques. So this is um, Kawaii Tarot Colouring Book by Lulu Mayo, and somebody laughed at the way I said Kawaii like Hawaii. Um, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Kawaii? Kawaii? I don't know. Whatever it is, that word tarot colouring book by Lulu Mayo and I did Wheel of Fortune which is the current month for colour the tarot hashtag with Candice at Happy Catastrophe here on YouTube Candice does a talk um, about the card and various interpretations of the card and we look for our, our versions in our books to colour for the particular card that she's um, discussing so this latest video was Wheel of Fortune. And I struggle a little bit with this book. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm not sure if it's the style of illustration. The paper is a little bit strange. Um, it does bleed through quite a bit. I don't, I don't know what it is, but anyway, that was water-based marker with a coloured pencil, various brands. And I also use this page to demonstrate the water-based marker technique. And again, this has got a lot of different brands of watercolor, uh, sorry, water-based markers on it. And I just did a demonstration on film, on camera, um, how to, how basically you can use any brand. You don't have to have the brand I'm working with. To get the same results but you could use any type of water-based marker and get those watery watercolor like effects and then I just used a bit of colored pencil over the top of the snow leopard I think there's a little bit in different places around the place but it's very simple that's what it is and the border is just um, water-based marker applied directly to the paper and then diluted with a water brush while it's on the paper. And I've roughed the paper up a little bit in places doing that technique, but um, you can see that bled through terribly doing that. So that's the Hermit, which was the um, last card that we did, but I was a bit behind, so I needed to catch up on a few. So that's Lulu Mayo with the unpronounceable word. Uh, Matchstick Mouse, this was a buddy colour with Axic Fumbles on Instagram. And we did this page. I had a bit of trouble here. I'd picked up markers and jumped in as I am wont to do. And it wasn't the right colour. I had a hard job blending it. I then tried to sort of disguise it blending with pencil. I didn't do a great job, but it's acceptable and the rest of the page is fine. And uh, we went for very different looks, which I always enjoy when I do a buddy color um, with someone and we interpret it in completely different ways. I, I really like when that happens. And so that was a, a fun, relaxing color I find. You know, it's smaller, it's more simple. Um, the subject's very whimsical. It's nice and relaxing after some of the more difficult um, involved compositions. So that's Matchstick Mouse, a big adventure colouring book. And lastly, I have Mythographic here, Cosmic Spirit. I did this page for Gemini for colouring with Kate's hashtag, which I will put in the description box. And that is water-based markers, Artex pencil, Secura jelly roll glaze and metallics. There's all sorts of things going on on that page. And this page was actually a bit different because it's very rare that I start out a page in pencil these days. I nearly always do some sort of marker or ink tents or watercolour base but this one I actually started with pe pencil and then didn't like the way it was going 
so I added marker in on top of some of the pencil and brought it in later so that was a bit different that one but happy with the way it turned out the colors are really vibrant and I enjoyed that one and the last one I'm going to show you is probably one of my least liked pages for the month this is Wheel of Fortune again for the color the tarot hashtag with um, happy catastrophe I'm not sure what makes me uneasy about this one. I don't know if it's a composition or whether it's the way I've coloured it and the colours I've chosen and the intensity of the colours I've chosen. I'm not 100% sure, but I did not really fully enjoy colouring this one for some reason. Um, it's not often I feel like that about a page, but um, yeah, I can't put my finger on what it was with this one. And I love this book. I love Fabiana's work in this book. So I don't know what it is. Um, you can see there's a lot of shiny bits going on there. But there you go. For whatever reason, it wasn't my favourite piece for the month. So it wasn't as busy as usual. However, I feel like some of the pages that I chose were a little bit more involved. Uh, I had a few of the simple ones. I think um, some of my demonstration videos and demonstration pictures actually turned out surprisingly well given that they were demonstrations. I think uh, this will be one of my most favourite pieces for the month. She worked out really well and I was hugely surprised at how those Crayola Super Tips worked using that technique that was really really good um but i think probably the most pleasurable book this month would have been this one and um, i did enjoy using the secure koi pens on that page i also enjoyed using the watercolor pencils and polychromos and this book here is one of my favourites to work in as well, Symphony of Cute Animals, or any of Kanoko's um, books I find really enjoyable. And I just love that, that sort of vibrant, saturated, deep colour. Um, it's one of my favourite ways to work. So I'm quite happy with the way that those pages turned out this month. I've got one here underway at the moment, that's a Derwent ink tent space so far. But um, yeah, I think even though the numbers weren't there, I enjoyed what I did. And I think there was quite a heavy influence on the watercolour -y type effects. Um, certainly a big influence of animals this month. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear if any of you have a favourite yourself. I'd like to hear what you think. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you all have a fantastic month of July. I hope to get a bit, a bit more back to normality for me through July. And um, yeah, I hope to bring you some more videos this month of demonstrations and um, hopefully a bit of variety for you to look in next month's completed pages as well. So thanks again. Take care, everybody, and I will see you really soon. Bye now.